November. It's going to be very huge politically and culturally. President Donald Trump faces re-election. And now the Democrats and much of the media have been trying everything to get him sacked before then. And I suspect they're petrified that if they have Trump still standing in November, he'll smash them. So for nearly three years, the Democrats, along with the left-wing media outlets, including our own ABC, pushed the fake news that Donald Trump actually stole the last election by colluding with Russia to hack the emails of rival Hillary Clinton. But that was fake news, as you know. After more than a year of investigation, Special Investigator Robert Mueller had to admit no proof of collusion at all. Complete fake. So now the Democrats are trying to get Trump sacked on another excuse, this time that he blackmailed the Ukrainian president by threatening to cancel military aid unless Ukraine investigated one of Trump's main Democrat rivals, Joe Biden. And why? Because Biden's son, Hunter, was put on the board of a corrupt Uranian comp a Ukrainian company on more than 100000 a month, imagine that, unqualified for the position, and was hired just when Dad Joe was vice president under Barack Obama and running America's Ukraine policy. What a coincidence. And it's a crime for a US president to want something like that investigated? In fact, Trump denies there was any quid pro quo with Ukraine, which got the US aid anyway without investigating Biden. But the United States Senate is now putting Trump on trial for high crimes and misdemeanours, sacked if they find him guilty. He'll probably survive, but his base will go nuts if they succeed. And yet this impeachment is the Democrats' best hope because their leading candidates wanting to run against Trump in November aren't very impressive. And on Tuesday we will get our first indication of which of them is the front runner. And we'll learn just how far left the De Democrats are going to go. And that's because the state of Iowa in America's Midwest on Tuesday will hold the first of the state caucuses, a vote of Democrats, to decide who the party should choose as its candidate. One candidate, though, won't be taking part, billionaire, publisher and former New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg. He's sitting this one out. But to discuss all the rest, joining me from Iowa a short while ago was Sky News political reporter and presenter Annalise Nielsen. Annalise Nielsen, thank you so much for joining me. Tell us uh, the Iowa polls on uh, Tuesday with the Democrats' uh, candidates all vying to become the nominee. This is the first one of uh, a series, of course. Why is this one so important? This one's so important because there's no clear front runner when it comes to the Democrats. It really is a wide open field and that's when you can have those people come out of nowhere like Barack Obama did. It for decades has really set the field for the presidential campaign for the Democrats. And so this year is like every other in that there is a very competitive field. Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders have been really neck and neck. What's really interesting there is Bernie Sanders hasn't spent as much time on the ground in these last few weeks in particular because of the impeachment hearings. He's been stuck in Washington. What we have seen is a huge ad spending campaign. I think the latest count had it at 70 million dollars. To put that in context, there's three million people in Iowa. So the amount of ad spending here is astronomical. You can see billboards everywhere you drive, the local TV news stations, every ad break is full of political ads and they're being asked to put their vote behind the next Democratic candidate. And it does seem like that ad spend at least is helping Bernie Sanders and really hasn't been helping Joe Biden as much as he would have expected. Well, that is interesting. Uh, obviously, from the spending, of course, it shows how desperate uh, they all are to become the front runner. Um, can you t take us through the top candidates here, the ones most likely to do well, and tell us which each sort of represents in terms of uh, politics of the Democrats? 
So the two big front runners are Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders. And Joe Biden really is that continuity vote. I was at a town hall with him just earlier this week and he was saying that he wanted to continue a lot of the legacy of the Obama administration to boost Medicaid, in particular to bring Medicare to more Americans. He was, however, a bit more circumspect about being in Af Afghanistan. Uh, he was saying that there did need to be less presence around the world and that's something that he had reconsidered since. Bernie Sanders is much more of a out there candidate, especially in the context of American politics. This is quite a conservative country, as we saw by the last election result. He's got some very bold promises, including climate action, like we saw in the Australian election. It's not costed, but it doesn't seem to have hit him with his constituency here. Climate change does seem to be a big issue. What's really interesting in the latest polls is Pete Buttigieg has pulled ahead of Elizabeth Warren in the Iowa caucuses. Mm. Pete Buttigieg is a really interesting candidate. He's 38. He's served in the military. He speaks six or seven languages, studied at Oxford, incredibly well read, but also quite personable. He's been doing quite well. I went to one rally at a high school on a Monday night. There were a couple of thousand people there waiting to hear him speak, and he did have that real Obama presence. He's quite middle of the road with a lot of his policies, but he is pro-choice. That's uh, going to be a difficult sell here in the Midwest, but who also has a very strong platform on climate change. He wants to bring politics back to the centre. Coming up after that is Elizabeth Warren. Now, she's quite out there with some of her policies as well. Another rally of hers, she was very strong on getting the women's vote. All the questions asked but bar one were from women in the crowd. It was a very female-heavy crowd. It, it was just a town hall in Cedar Rapids, but it did show that that is her key constituency. She's got some really bold promises. She wants to wipe out all student debt in America. It's over $1.3 trillion worth. She's been pinned on that on the campaign trail because Americans say, I paid off my student loan debt. Why should people coming up after me have theirs wiped off for free and get that advantage that I don't have? It's a serious question. It's been a consistent topic in all the town halls I've been to about student debt and how it does cripple people, but her solution might just be that bridge too far. After that, there's the smaller candidates, Andrew Yang, Tom Steyer. I'm at his event now in Fairfield, Iowa, which is just wrapped up. They're packing up behind me, as you can see. And they're more courting the fringe... And uh, their big thing is going to be who their supporters switch to in the caucuses when they don't hit that 15% marker that they do need to when the voting starts. That's quite likely to happen with them if the polling is correct, as it suggests. So clearly it seems to me that there's, uh, the, the Iowa poll may show some light in the future of the Democrat Party, whether it's going to lurch even further to the left, uh, Warren and the socialist uh, 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 Sanders... Elizabeth Warren, of course, being the, the, the woman who for years claimed she was uh, Indian and now says, uh, sorry about that. And then the more pragmatic in the middle, Democrats, former Pro Vice President Joe Biden, and then this newcomer, Buttigieg, who I actually like the sound of. Um, any sense of which way this, this contest will be decided? It's such a hard one to pick. Speaking to people on the ground, a lot of people are just saying, oh, I'll probably go for Joe Biden. The issue with the smaller candidates is people don't want to waste their vote. But Pete Buttigieg is one to watch. He has a real presence with people. He, when he was speaking, it had that kind of oratory that we saw from Obama. And he really was getting the crowd whipped up. And it was that quite interpersonal exchange. The issue he has in the Midwest is that he is gay. He's married to a public school teacher, which he's quite proud of. He mentions it regularly. But this is a very conservative part of the country. Privately, I've had some people say to me uh, that they couldn't support that lifestyle. When you put them on camera and say, what do you think of Pete Buttigieg, they just say, oh, I don't know much about him. That's a really hard thing to tackle. But yeah. he has been very popular on the ground here. His other issue is that he hasn't been polling well with African Americans and Hispanic people. There have been concerns in his campaign that his staff members who are minorities don't feel respected either. But he does seem to take that issue quite seriously. And at the end of the day, Barack Obama it was said that he didn't have the support of white people. He got their vote. It might just happen the other way around as well. Now, uh, the polls I've seen recently, they suggest, and they're fairly consistent, that just about any Democrat who gets the nomination that's in the run now uh, would beat Donald Trump at a general election. Yet you, you have to look fairly hard to find uh, experts who actually believe that will pan out that way. Why is that? 
I think it's just so far out. It really is hard to quantify that. And what you'll see is that there is a saturation at the moment in the media with either the impeachment trial or the caucuses. So people are talking about what they're getting excited about with Democratic candidates. Republicans aren't out there getting excited. They know who their nominee is. The Republicans I have been talking to feel absolutely under siege with this impeachment trial. They think it's a witch hunt. And so many of them aren't looking to switch their vote at all. It's already been decided for them. A lot of the Democrats feel the same way and it seems like it's one or the other. People are absolutely obsessively watching it or pointedly ignoring it. They can't bear to watch what's happening in Washington. It has turned into a bit of a sideshow. But for many, especially the Democrats I've been hanging out with at these caucus town hall events, they do feel like there is an absolute case to answer. They feel like this is the reason they want a strong Democratic candidate. But at the end of the day, if they want to get out there and really get support, they need more minority voters out there. They need more young voters to turn out on Election Day. And that work starts now, convincing them about why they should. Well, that's why Elizabeth Warren is promising... Uh... Uh, free education for university students. That'll uh, help her, I guess. Annalise, your coverage has been terrific. We uh, look forward to hearing from you next week with this really do-or-die poll on Tuesday for at least some of the Democrat frontrunners, and perhaps we'll see whether the Democrats will lurch to the left or stick to the centre of left-wing politics. Thank you so much for your analysis. Absolutely. Thank you, Andrew.